This could work. Hello, and good morning, everybody. It's a bit earlier than I'm usually up and about. However, I have been summoned by a mysterious new sorcerer, new to the v 2 gang. As you know, I am Kate Bartemia, and today we are going fishing with Tinwi Vogel. Good morning, Tinwi. Good 
Good morning. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am, well, I'm not usually out of my coffin this early, but I am all right. And how are you, my summoner? <laughs> Doing well. Doing well. I'm usually up this early, so... Despite that, I still feel tired. <laughs> Ready to do some fishing? Absolutely. It's been so long since I've played Stardew Valley that when I was getting this set up the other day, I was I was very tempted to just play Stardew for like 12 hours after. <laughs> it's I, one of those yeah. games I could just sit down and like play forever and not really think about what what time it is or where like if i have to be anywhere i just lose i'll lose hours of my life to it right i i had that a while ago with i can't remember which one it was there was a similar game to stardew that i played a while ago that i just i spent way too much time in was it uh was it like a console game or was it pc it was it was for the Switch. Um oh, what is it? Was it Rune Factory? No. There's no Harvest Moon, sorry. Harvest there's Moon. Another, yeah, there's another Harvest Moon's another really popular uh um popular uh farming sim game. Yeah, I played. I think, I think Harvest Moon predates Stardew by like many, many years. Yes, <laughs> I think so. I there's because so I think there's there's Stardew or no there's Harvest Moon. And there's one other game, um, where they're very similar because the dev, the original dev, like broke away and then made oh, yeah. Harvest Moon. Oh. I don't actually know the answer to that one. I, I've only really heard of Harvest Moon and then Stardew, and then there's some newer games that are coming out that are have that same vibe. Right. Got my first one. I I am currently getting the fishing pole because how Stardew saves it starts at the beginning of the day every day, um, and so I didn't. Had to run all the way over here and get a fishing pole before I could actually get get any fish. I need to change spots because as like half the time I was being blocked by a tree, but I couldn't stop because I had a <laughs> fish on the line. So you said you were playing Red Dead 2, right? Yes, um, I'm playing how Red Dead. How does the mechanic work in that? Um, so it's it's fairly simple. Um, yeah, uh, you've got, uh, the most complicated part of it, honestly, is just the, um, yeah, that's it, Story of Seasons, thank you, Shaper. Um, sorry, <laughs> ADHD <laughs> brain. Um, the most complicated uh -huh. part about it is just how many lures and kinds of bait there are, and obviously for some of the bait, they're limited, um, so you have to, you know, buy more when you run out. Uh -huh. Um and uh there's you can only buy like certain certain lures and baits at certain places until you unlock until you get to like this one town in the bayou down south um that has like everything oh. it's a fishing town um yeah but that's why you said you had to play up to it uh no no i actually haven't gotten there yet um there's oh. a there's a specific <laughs> mission um here in chapter two uh that is the fishing tutorial um and that's when and you can't you don't you can't actually use the fishing rod until you get there um and it's like midway through chapter two so i, I was having to play through all the all the missions to get here oh my gosh but uh yes shaper is right it is story of seasons that i was thinking of because harvest moon and story of seasons 
So this, the, the thing that happened with that is that the original dev who made Story of Seasons um, left the company, but then the company retained all of the rights to it, uh, including the name Story of Seasons. So he was like, okay, bet. Kind of changed it a little and then released Harvest Moon. <laughs> um, and Copy my homework, but don't be too similar. Yes, exactly. And arguably, Harvest Moon is better because it's it's been running kind of on like a Ruby mentality of they're kind of following the original stuff, but doing it badly um, mm-hmm. from what a lot of the people that have played both say. Okay. I realized I forgot about the whole inventory management in Stardew. And so I'm like, oh, now I have to now I have to go. I have to make a chest so I can deposit all of these things that are in my inventory that are taking up all the slots that could be fish <laughs> like. oh yeah i haven't upgraded my my satchel um so i think i can only like hold five fish so i won't be able to like keep all of them unless i want to keep riding back to valentine to sell them <laughs> yeah i've got oh, that's, that, i just made that you can change the color of the chests and i made the chest green but i realized it's on grass so i probably shouldn't do that oh <laughs> yeah, stardew has a backpack system where you get like a row of inventory slots and then you can buy a bigger backpack as time goes on and so i i forgot because i had on my other save i have the max backpack space so i was like oh i'll be fine no i have no space <laughs> i caught one fish and was like oh no my inventory is full hold on wait <laughs> this isn't quite right right how does the um you know i realized i never properly answered your question um it's okay, from, I forgot for, I asked you a question. Uh, uh, <laughs> Honestly. About, like, the fishing system for Red Dead. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so you choose a lure, and essentially, it's it's like um, most um, 3D, um, like, 3D games like this that I'm fishing, where you just, um, you know, you cast your line, and then you honestly just wait. You fight the fish a little bit by moving your rod, and then when it gets tired, you reel it in. Also, the fish gets tired. Yes. Um, you know, it'll be, it has like a very specific animation for like it's fighting you. Um, and then once you've, you've fought it back enough, uh, you can start reeling it in without risking like breaking the line. Mm hmm. Yeah, Stardew has a mechanic where you cast out your line, you wait, and then when you get, oh, you get a little prompt of like, oh, there's a fish on the hook. And then it like brings up a bar that with a little fish in it. And you have to like keep the bar, the fish in the bar until it, uh, a gauge fills up, and then okay. you catch it. And you can catch like uh, I don't I don't know the actual terms for it, but like silver star, gold star fish as well, depending on like the type of rod you're using, the type of bait you're using. Um, it's very addicting. Okay. So a Kojima type issue? I'm not actually sure, Shaper. Dang, I lost it. Have you have you gone fishing outside your coffin before? Uh not um only a little bit. Hmm. Mm, it was never really a big pastime for me. Usually, if I was with somebody else that was fishing, I would be reading. Oh, really? Gotcha. Yeah. I've been fishing a couple of times. The So, like, the last time I went fishing, I went with a group of my friends um, down to, like, a farm of one of theirs. And that was fun, because we caught a bunch of fish to, like... Uh, actually like cook for dinner and i i felt very proud of myself that day because for whatever reason all the fish kept biting my uh pole like kept i kept reeling in like a bunch of fish and i got like at least like half maybe a little more of what we ate for dinner that day and i hadn't fished in like a long time but for some reason the fish were just like attracted to me to me <laughs> Nice. Um, I know. I was, I was like, I haven't done this in forever. I'm really glad this happened. 
<laughs> but now I have like a reputation to halt to uphold now. <laughs> um, I did go uh, ocean fishing once. Yo, that sounds cool. What was that like? Um, it was. It was interesting, um, but also a little like not really as exciting um, as I as I thought it would be, um, because it was a ch it was a chartered thing, uh, and so you know there were a whole bunch of uh, poles just on on the side of the ship uh, or the boat, um, uh -huh. and so. Uh, you know, we, we kind of just sat there in the boat and waited for one of, like, the 50 lines to get something. Uh, but we did get a couple sharks. That was exciting. Yeah. What? <laughs> you caught sharks? Yeah, little ones, but yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I don't know why that wouldn't occur to me. It's like, that's a fish you could catch. My, my, my only idea of sharks is, like, they are big and scary and have many teeth. Some of them look really silly, but... That's so cool, though. I actually used to go fishing quite a bit when I was younger. My grandparents had like a little cabin that was next to a lake. Uh, so we'd visit them in the summers and I would go like swimming and fishing and all this stuff. I was not very good at fishing back then. Yep. That's for sure. Yeah. Please, please come here, fish. I just, I just want to catch you. But the bar on this rod is so small because it's just the basic, like, beginner rod. Right. I, I get, it's so tiny. Oh, I got a bunch of bait, and I can't use it because this rod can't take bait. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the starter rod, they start you out with just very small bar, no bait, but as you upgrade your rod, you can start attaching bait to it, you can start attaching lures, uh... If, o if only I could, part of it is just like, hmm, maybe I should just go on my ult and like <laughs> fish on that. But I actually have like a real farm going on that one and I don't, there's a lot of effort in that farm. Oh, there is thunder outside. Ooh. Neat. Having very bad luck with these salmon. I have been catching primarily sardines and some seaweed. A lot of seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I put so much effort into getting to this point in the game so that I could fish. I could have just booted up Minecraft. There's fishing in Minecraft. Yeah, no, I was saying, like, you were spending all that time playing. I was like, why don't you just, like, boot up RuneScape or something? Because uh, I don't really... I just That's, like, don't really extra en... idling. <laughs> I just don't really enjoy RuneScape much anymore. I have... I used to play a lot of RuneScape when I was younger. And now I'm too busy for RuneScape, more or less. Because RuneScape has a hold on me like no other. And if I start to play RuneScape, I do not stop for like, I become obsessed with it for like a month or two. And then I, and then I don't pick it up for another year. And that's my experience with RuneScape. That's my experience with a lot of MMOs, honestly. Right. Oh, just cast my line on the ground. Yeah, I did that with Star Wars The Old Republic where I went absolutely feral over it for like four months and then I haven't touched it since. <laughs> Ooh, okay, got another big one. So I saw this topic on Twitter the other oh. week. I can't remember if it was last week or the week prior, but it was trending and I was very, I thought it would be a fun thing to like talk about. So what was trending was, it was a question someone had asked that said, like what fruit or vegetable is like 
a 10 out of 10 S tier at its best, but when it's like not at its best, it's like a one. Um, because my answer is honeydew. honeydew oh milk. yeah, a good honeydew is sweet. It's juicy. It's fantastic. But when it's not ripened, it is flavorless and disgusting, in my opinion. Yeah, similar beat to that, I gotta say a watermelon. Watermelon, huh? Cause... I can probably eat raw watermelon. Not because... raw... <laughs> Wait, not raw watermelon. <laughs> you cook your watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just like not ripened watermelon. <laughs> Because, like, I mean, you know, I could eat it, but it's it's so... It's either, it's either, like, the blandest thing that I just don't even remember eating afterwards, or it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've never had a watermelon that was between those two. It's either amazing or terrible. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of melons suffer from that. Because I feel like even cantaloupe has that problem, too. Not to the same degree as, like, honeydew or anything, but it definitely, like, doesn't hit right when it's not ripened properly. Right. Some people are even saying stuff like bananas, even, oh. or, like, pears. Oh, here's a good question. At what point do you eat, like, a banana? I will eat it at old, like, I'll eat it when it's green. Um. Oh, that's a big fish. That's why oh. I was having so much trouble. <laughs> that is a <laughs> 19 pound musky. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and I'm somehow gonna. Oh, oh, I have to carry it. Oh, um. <laughs> I was about to say, how am I gonna put this in my, uh. In my bag. Oh no, I have to put it on my horse so I can go sell it. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> um, Way to go. I should have thrown it back. <laughs> nope, you've com you have committed to the big fish now. Well, but here's the problem. If I put it on my horse and I don't go to town and sell it, it'll go back. <laughs> Is that a problem? No, I guess I'll go to town and sell it. <laughs> but like... <laughs> This comes into the point of could be just randomly attacked and then it is no longer a chill stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. And then... that's that's a risk you have to take. All right, fine. I guess I'm going all the way over there to the butcher in Valentine <laughs> to sell the fish. <laughs> Make a little money. Come on. Why not? Let's turn this into capitalism. <laughs> Alrighty. Stream. Fuck, what were we talking about before I caught this fish? <laughs> Bananas. Bananas, that's right. Um, yeah. And I am very curious. You said you would eat a banana green? Yeah. I won't enjoy it, but I'll eat it. <laughs> I don't think I could. I, I never get. I'll never eat them when they're green. They're just too flavorless. But they have to be at least somewhat yellow. And then the one they start getting the like some of the brown spots on them, that's I think that's peak for me. When they get too brown, they just start to get mushy and it's a little disappointing. Yeah. It's very sweet, but like When they start to get brown is when you want to use them for like a fruit shake or something. Because they're a perfect for a fruit yeah. shake at that point. Um now when I say green, I mean like a light green, you know, if it's still like real like dark green it's no but bananas get dark green yeah it's like 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 long before like it's a darker green uh because there's like you know a transition period between it's dark green and then it gets lighter and then it turns yellow um ooh, or banana bread that's right shaper um banana bread is the best i yeah. think that's one of my favorite breads i need to, i should make banana bread sometime i i haven't actually made it since i came out here yes i my you know what? that's what i'm bringing friend. on monday <laughs> nice my friend makes the best banana bread and i'm not the biggest fan of banana bread that has like nuts in it or anything like that but 
the way she makes it is just it's perfect it's it's s tier triple s tier banana bread what is this there's some like weird i need a shovel or something no maybe the i don't know there's like a blue box here and i actually don't know what it is it's just stuck in the sand that's so weird i haven't actually seen that before I'm playing on a uh, home farm map that I haven't actually used before because it said it was ideal for fishing. Okay. And so it comes with like its own dock, which is super nice. Oh, nice. But yeah, there's, I guess some stuff must just wash up on the beach because it's like mostly sandy instead of like good for farming. I... I I had a similar <clears throat> similar experience the other day when I was playing Minecraft. Um, I have this uh, this like heavily modded server that I'm on, um, and I was just fishing, and I got a golden chest. I'm like, mm -hmm. how did? Or no, it wasn't even a chest. It was literally just like a gold box. It looked like a block of gold, but it was a box to open. I'm like, how did I even fish this up? How? What? Did, what <laughs> caught? <laughs> Yeah, in uh, sorry, you can just pick, you can just fish up like entire cans of soda and some other stuff, like, and random treasure. So, like, ores and like basically other items are like legendary, like, uh, artifact type things from the library. And some of it is like, how did I catch you? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is just a rock. How did I hook this? I think you can also find like like Easter eggs as well. Or, like eggs. Like, <laughs> Literal <different>. eggs. <laughs> I, I think I did fish up an egg once when I was playing. And I was very confused. It was either I found it while I was fishing, or I found it while I was uh in the mines. I, I was just like, I didn't even know this was in the game. This, like, certain egg, but I think it's, like, not super hard to find, but it's definitely rare. You can, like, hatch it and raise what's inside. I won't say what it is, because it's kind of a fun find, but it is, like, interesting. Like, this is fun that they put that in. Wait, so you fish up an egg from the ocean, and you it can... It was either... It was, it was either from the ocean or I found it in, like, the mines. I can't remember which it was. So you just find an egg in a place that no egg has any right to be. And it's just, it's, it's fertile, and you can hatch it. Yeah, if you put it in the... There's, like, a chicken coop you can have, you can build, and if you build that and then, like, incubate that egg... Uh, it will hatch into something and you can like raise it and raise more And it's like very expensive like it sells for a lot of money, too Huh Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's fun though That's the other problem is I keep passing like these little like random events and I'm like I want to interact with them But I know that half of them are gonna just start combat <laughs> so I'm just not gonna. <laughs> you don't want to be the chaotic vampire. Just... Instead of fishing, you're just going, like, fighting stuff. I mean, you if that's... The vibes? If that's what the plan had been, but no, I, I, I'm i honestly here for a relaxing morning of fishing. Unfortunately, I just lost karma, because apparently, uh, it... <laughs> yeah, I, I should have interacted with that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> So people think less of you now because you did. You're like fishing focused. Yeah, like it, it's you really have to like think about which ones, like how you're gonna interact with some of them because very often uh, you'll be passing by like bounty hunters that are that are bringing somebody in, and if you uh -huh. don't interact with them, it's not an issue. Um, it you know there's you don't get good karma, but you also don't get bad karma. Um, and then sometimes you'll be passing somebody and it's like. This seems like it's a bounty hunter, but apparently that was a kidnapper. Oh. Because <laughs> you don't know until you've passed and it's just, oh, you lost karma. 
What? <laughs> that seems kind of like... Well, I guess the idea is typically when you are playing, you want to, like, actually play the game and, like, you're encouraged to interact with those events. But not today. Only fishing. <laughs> yep. thought of another fruit that is 10 out of 10 and then also 1 out of 10. Oh. With pears. I don't... Oops, sorry. Yeah. No, go no, on. Go ahead. No, you. I, I, was, I was just gonna say, I haven't really had pears in like a long time. For a while, I would have them with like cereal and it would like add something sweet to it, but when you got like a bad pear, it was either like incredibly mushy or incredibly like flavorless but when the pear was like good man they're very full of flavor also i've noticed that a lot of vegetables are pretty consistent in their like how good they are and if you like them fruits seem to be varied it's like because i'm trying to think of even a vegetable that would like be I know I can never uh, pay you, but that would be a ten out of ten, but also a one out of ten. And I'm like, most of these are just fives or sevens, just consistently. There's not really a vegetable that has a difference, so a drastic difference, I should say. Hmm. I think. Yeah, I can't really think of a vegetable that's 10 and 1. I've had some really bad corn, but... Uh, yeah. I I don't know. I haven't had, like, bad corn. I've had, like... I guess when corn is... There are some vegetables that, like, when they're fresh, they are better. Like, un unless you're about... Instead of buying, like, something frozen or something... Uh, like, if you buy it at a farmer's market or something, that it's better fresh right like i think corn is one of those um because i've had like fresh sweet corn like shucked and then grilled and that stuff's really really good get some butter on that maybe some like paprika it's real good i remember i was i was i was helping my friend uh shuck corn for like grilling once and i don't know what was up with this like bag of corn that they bought, but so many of them just had like caterpillars in them. Ew. Rip. Like like big. Oh, they were really cute caterpillars, but they were like massive too. Like they had just been like vibing in the top of these corns. As <laughs> you open it up, and they just like look up at you like, "Oh, hello, sir." <laughs> and we just had to like put it back, and grab a different one. <laughs> <laughs> it scared me the first time because it was the first time I had actually like shocked corn properly like for real fresh stuff <laughs> and so when I'd opened it up oh god that's a really fast fish excuse you um <laughs> when I opened it and there was just a big bug in there I like freaked out a little I was like no thank you I'm not here for this <laughs> I caught an eel Dang, this is a good price. That uh, that big muskie is selling for five dollars and forty cents. Just five? Is that a lot of how? Is okay. that a lot of money in that game or? Uh, yes. So this is set in like the old west. This is like you know uh, a little okay, the late old west. Um, so yes, uh, five dollars is a fair amount of money. Um, okay. Mm, I'm trying to think of something I can compare it to on the price. No, I think I, I, I you mentioning it was in the old west kind of that kind of stuff. That I my first thought was, oh, five dollars. That's a lot of money. I could buy a coffee with that. <laughs> um, like a room at uh, a, like a night at the uh, at the hotel in town is a dollar. Oh wow! I wish I wish thing I wish that was the same in real life. Man, back before inflation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and now I ride all the way back to this lake <laughs> over here. Oh, you spent this whole time riding? Yes. It really what? is far away. <laughs> yes, what do you think I meant when I said the town's all the way over there? Like, there are other fishing spots I can what? go to. I... Oh, what'd you get? Sorry. No, I, I grabbed my pickaxe from the chest because I had to go deposit stuff. And I was like, maybe the pickaxe will break this blue box that washed up on the beach. It did. Do you want to know what it gave me? Did it give you an egg? No, it gave me two hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> they are called survival burgers, but they gave me two hamburgers. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're very good. They give me- oh my god. Those are really good. What in the world? It's A just- A convenient snack for the explorer. <laughs> I feel like I just drove past McDonald's and picked up some snacks. Someone really just put high quality <laughs> hamburgers in a box and threw it in the ocean. God, yeah, that's what I think it feels like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here I here I am fishing up soggy newspapers and seaweed from the from the ocean. And yet a box of a box of burgers just comes and just comes in. I don't know, I guess I mean I'm set on like energy for a while. I could probably fish until like 2 a.m. now. That's cool. I wonder what else will wash up on this beach then. Maybe maybe an egg. <laughs> I gotta say, I love in yeah. your in your model, um, the like when your when your smile goes all really big, it looks really cute. Oh thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> Yeah, I I tried to as much as the mouth did not want to uh work the way I wanted it to when I when I got the smile and I like set all the parameters to make it when I'm smiling I was I was like oh this is perfect I got one thing I've got my smile hell yeah where are they actually Krabby Patties from the deep god maybe you know what yeah they could just be Krabby Patties oh my god the burgers that washed up on the on the beach but where's my drink how can I eat my burgers without my drink? Actually, I have fished up like three colas. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so actually, I do have some stuff to drink. I got a new record for my halibut. Cool. Oh, hello. That's that's a wild. Oh, that's a herd of wild horses. Okay. What? I just. Did, you just have a bunch of... Did a bunch of horses just run by? Uh, yeah. I, I was just running along, and a herd of wild horses just ran by. Yeah. Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. The other part about bad part about riding at night is that I will most likely encounter wolves a couple times. You've just got a lot of problems with like getting from one space to another, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like um, I could uh, I could be like fishing somebody somewhere else closer to town, but this is where like the good salmon are. Um, so that's why that's I'm great. going all the way to this lake. There's a closer, uh, a slightly closer place with salmon, but it's in a river, and I cannot purchase the 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 lure for like big river fish. So I'm very maybe. unlikely to catch them. I don't know. You just made five dollars. Maybe you can now. Well, no, 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 no. I haven't found the store that sells them. Oh, gotcha. Uh, more important, most important question, Kay. What is the name of your horse? This is Jezza. Oh, what a, that's a wonderful name. You say that, but I was literally staring at my computer for like 20 minutes trying to think of a name for this horse, and I eventually just like key spammed a little bit, and then from that I got <laughs> Jezza. 
Aw, oh, that's great though. <laughs> Boy, yeah, she's uh actually, I think this is a guy horse, I can't remember. Um hold it's on. A horse. Yeah, so what's up with you? Please, it's I gotta get back to bed. My my uh, it, it doesn't tell me. I gotta go to bed. Uh, um, in Stardew, there is a time mechanic where, like, if it gets past like two a.m., your body just like collapses, and you have to pay money to get uh, someone to, yep. to someone just like takes you back to your bed, which is weird. Um, you have to pay money <laughs> for that. They they make you pay. Yeah, they make you pay a small fee if you collapse. Oh. In, in Harvest Moon, if you stayed up too late, you still collapse, but then you just appeared in your bed. Yeah. Oh god, someone's getting attacked by wolves. It's because there's a... cruddy capitalist country in... Uh, er, a store, not a country, wow. It's a capitalist store in... in uh, Stardew. called Joja... What is it? Joja Company? Joja Cola? Joja Cola is what they sell, but... Jesus. They'll find your body and they'll be like, hey, we took- They're basically just like, hey, we found you on the ground and we took some of your money and brought you back to your house and unlocked your door and put you in bed. And it's like, that's weird. Okay. I just gave you medicine and you still died. How dare you? Well, I guess I'm gonna go ride back to town now. Well, to happened? sell this wolf. <laughs> oh, you got attacked by wolves? Uh, no, some other guy was getting attacked by a wolf, and I went to save him, and then he had the nerve to die. <laughs> and I was <laughs> right here at the lake, you. too! <laughs> I don't know, if you couldn't save him, maybe that's on you, man. I gave him medicine, and he drank it, and then he died. <laughs> <laughs> the nerve of him. Whatever, I'll go, I'll go to the lake and I'll fish a couple before I head back to town. Make it worth it. So the salmon, so like if it's, is it the same as the salmon where you, or not the salmon, the, the really big fish you, you caught? Do you have to just have the wolf on your horse? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Um, you can also, like, skin the animals, and then you can stack, like, a lot of skin, like, larger skins on the back of your horse to, like, transport more if you're, like, going out hunting. Um, but, uh, I believe I get more money if I just bring, like, the whole wolf. Hmm. But, it is a bit dark for fishing, so let's set up a camp. Didn't even make it all the way to the... Yeah, I was literally right here when I heard that guy. Look at this fish. Love the way he cooks in this game, and when you're at like a campfire, because he literally just sticks whatever it is on his knife. <laughs> and hold, kind of holds it in the fire, and like... Arthur, you is, poor man, that is not how you cook food. I don't know, is that is that not how you cook? You can, uh, So I don't know if you've tried to, like, stick up, like, a piece of fish on a knife. I haven't, but I have an idea of what would happen. It falls apart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, yes. Snake oil. Because that exists. Oh my god, there's fish tanks now? You can keep the fish? When did they put that in the game? Oh, that's fun. Hell yeah. Oh, it's like in, um... When I, when I found out about the fish tanks in Subnautica, like, I know you're supposed to use them as like, Oh, well, you've got emergency food. I'm like, no, these are my pets now. <laughs> these are my babies and I will protect them with my life. Except for Phil. He's emergency rations. Oh no! 
Just like Paimon. Hill. <laughs> How could you say that about Paimon? But also, where's the lie? <laughs> Did you play any Genshin Impact when it came out? A little bit. I played a lot of it for quite a while. <laughs> I really liked it. And then one day I just like, it was in between like some like big updates, so like the updates were kind of slow. So I just like stopped playing and then I like didn't pick it back up for a while. Uh, meaning forever. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't picked it up in quite some time. All I see is all the fun fan art people make of the characters on Twitter. Yeah, um... The only reason I, I really played it was just because I liked how the characters looked, and I'm like, you know what? I could be doing this and spending a lot of money drawing these characters, or I could just Google them. <laughs> Not gonna subscribe to your NFT gotcha system. <laughs> no, don't tell me that Mihoyo didn't get into NFTs. No, 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 he didn't, he didn't. I, I, at least I don't think so. I, oh, it's really just like, a, oh... So you're saying I, I pay money and now this this character is mine only forever? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I I really like gacha games, but I'm really stingy with my money, so I very rarely actually pay for pulls. But like that game was so tempting to actually do that. I really wanted some of those characters. Who did you who was on your team? Um, I had, uh, I did, like, the one, like, beginner pull, and I got that maid character. Um, oh, Noelle, yes. Yeah, so I had Noelle, Amber, uh, the MC, and that, um, witch that everyone calls Mommy. Oh, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible at remembering names. <laughs> I played for a long time. I, my team... What was my team comp before I stopped? It was Tartaglia was on my team. I refused to take him off of it. He is he's fun. I had Zhao for a bit. I uh oh fish and then I think it like I had like a fourth spot that kind of rotated based on my needs or like two of my spots rotated based on my needs. So fish and um. Tartalia were my main ones, and then I also had Beto built up as well. She was a re she's a really good character. It was an inch away from shore, and it broke the line. Oh god, no! You just reminded me that happened to me too when I was fishing with my friends for for dinner. It was like a massive bass or something that I had like hooked, and I could see it right as I was pulling it up, and then it snapped and got away from me. I was livid. Oh. It, I was so close. It was so big. Oh, and then I just, it, it took the line, it took the hook, it took everything. I was like, are you serious? I was so upset. You're all my friend. I think I have uh, fishing stuff up here. Um, I've been meaning to, so I think, um, Chris and I and Nathaniel talked about going fishing at some point, and we never did. I think... Yeah. I... I think he got a fishing pole, too. Like, Nathaniel gave him one. I think there was plans to do something like this weekend, and then it just fell through. Ah. One second. I will be right back. Okay. Hmm. This is another big muskie on the line. Hopefully I have room on the back of my horse for it. What about the back of your horse? Uh, I've got another muskie on the line. Uh, I I don't know how many like animals I can stack on the back of the horse. So you I should, hope... You, you should find out. I mean, I will when I catch it. <laughs>
the fish is just sitting still in the bar and I'm just accidentally holding X too far. Oof. It keeps going above and below it. I'll be back in later helping to install garage shelving. Alrighty. Hope that goes well for you, Shaper. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I I totally forgot to, but did you ever look through the Vampire the Masquerade book that we found? Haha, <laughs> no. I, it, it haunts the back of my mind. Um, I'm like, oh, I have some free time. Maybe I should, like, you know, go through this book a little bit. And then I'm like, or, or, or I could play Super Auto Pets for a bit. I think that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Oh, I keep seeing that everywhere. It's it's really fun. I can teach you how to play sometime if you want. Hell yeah. Because they have multiplayer, kind of. They have, like, an arena setting. It's timed, but I could also help you, like, learn the animals and stuff. Okay. Some of them. They just released a new expansion pack, which is super, super fun. Okay, I cannot have the muskie and the wolf on here. So we'll skin that off. I've also been playing this game recently that is called uh, Backpack Hero. I saw another streamer playing it and I was like, this looks exactly up my alley of things I enjoy playing. And I have been obsessed with it. It is very, very fun. Um, you basically play as this little mouse who uh, is uh, diving through this dungeon. And as you level up, you start with like a three by three square of backpack space. And as you level up, you just get more space in your backpack. So in some ways it's just like inventory management, the game, but in other ways it's like, oh, I have this one, I have this one wand, all of these mana crystals, this book that increases my mana crystal usage. And I can just kill pretty much any enemy very quickly. Like I was doing it, like some of the enemies start with like, 50 or 100 HP, something like that. And as you delve deeper into the dungeon, their HP goes up and up and up. Uh, I had a weird wand build that I had that did in tur on turn one would do almost a thousand damage. And, I, and as I continued the fight, it got higher. <laughs> oh. And, oh god, I lost the fish. Oh, pain. <laughs> so yeah, I was I I didn't live long enough. I I died to like poison, but I definitely felt like it could have gone infinite on that one. It is very fun and it's a roguelike. So when when you die, you all your stuff resets. Right. I, I eat that stuff up. I love playing those games. Hell yeah. Um. I need to go back to Hades at some point. Uh, me too, man. I do too. I got most of the way through the game, and then I just... I had played it too much at the time, so I was, like, kind of burnt out on it. But it was... So, it's so fun. How far into Hades did you get? Um, I got a really lucky run where I got to, uh, to Hades himself. Oh, okay. I got, I like, I... the perfect combination of blessings. Oh, yeah. I've beat him, like, several times, Hades, and then... Because the game keeps going, technically, after... After you win the first time. Um... I, I just haven't... Like... I wonder... I don't know how long the story goes, because you get more story bits the more you, uh, loop, basically. Oh god, the fish. <laughs> But, so I don't actually know how long the story goes, but I did get part most of the way through. Like I was starting to get like, I'm not as good as like some other people, but I know I was getting into like he four, five, six, seven. Like I was starting to just make like stupidly hard run for runs for myself for no reason. Okay, hell yeah. I feel though now. If I start playing it again, I will have to restart it because I am not going to know anything that is going on. 
or like how to play the game at all. But if I play on the save I currently have, I will definitely just play as hard as I would usually play, which is not my current skill set. Fair. <laughs> Now here's the question, can I fit two of these muskies on my horse? Hopefully. What are you going to do if you can only fit one? Oh, I'll probably see if I can cook one. At the campfire or something. But that's a whole five dollars you're eating. I don't want. Please. I need I need to get more backpack space. I don't want the soggy newspaper. <laughs> My inventory is just full of fish. <laughs> and a little bit of algae. I mean, honestly, I don't really need What do you mean it got away? It wasn't even oh, fighting. Oh no! Oh well. It I don't... just let go. I guess, yeah. Um, I don't really need to be earning a whole lot of money right now. Um, so I'm still fairly early in the game, and there's a lot of like situations where I can earn money later. But uh... oh, wait, did I did I lose my lure? Did it, did it steal your lure and go and then just run off? It might have. Like, I've had a couple. Like, I lost a couple before and I never. Never. I. Oh, I lost my lure. Fine, no. I guess I'll go buy another one. Oh, that's so bad. But you have to go back to town anyway, right? Because you've got the musky? Yeah, so also the musky and then the, uh, the wolf pelt. At least you'll have plenty of money for another lure. Oh yeah, I've still got like a hundred dollars. They're like... Fuck, I want to say. But I can't, like, I can only have one. Which is annoying. Hmm. How's your fishing going? Pretty good. I'm making a lot of money. And I was already able to buy the upgraded fishing rod so I could actually use bait that I only didn't realize I could use bait until about a minute ago when I was like, oh yeah, I have that upgraded rod now. So I'll get to use that tomorrow. Otherwise, it's going pretty good. About to go sleep and then probably wake up in the morning and buy more fishing supplies because that's my entire life. <laughs> I, I wake up at 6 a.m., I fish, I come back and sleep. That is it. Grandchild, I leave to you my farm. I know you'll do better with it than I did. Yeah, I'm gonna go fishing. Actually, no. I want fish. <laughs> I want fish. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, I get the cat. Oh no, I have to name my cat. I, I just... Uh-oh. I just accidentally ran over a goat. Oh no! There's- oh god, stop running into my horse! <laughs> These goats keep running into my horse, but my horse is bigger, so I'm knocking them over, and I feel bad. Oh no. How could you? That's so cruel. Will I adopt the cat? Of course I will. What do I name this cat? Fish. I'm not naming it Fish. Key spam and see what you get. No. There's a random button, I could just use that. But you know what? You know what? I'll, na I'll name it after my I'll name it after my familiar. I'll name it after Taffy. Oh hell yeah! Get on now. Ain't looking for company here. Little Taffy will be the best kitty. We. <laughs> Do you want to hear a funny story that happened yesterday? Oh yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh. Oh my god, I have the deluxe fishing pole already available to me? What the hell? Um...
so I, yesterday, my husband and I were putting up um, some pictures because we actually bought picture frames for once. Uh, and we were moving some stuff around and the cats were interested, uh, as usual, as one would expect. Um, when does the chicken store open? Hello? Oh. Um, and so we were, uh, putting up these pictures and my husband accidentally put it up on the wall. We were using twine instead of wire to put them up because we just didn't have any wire and the frame fell. Um, it didn't break completely, but it definitely like knocked everything around. And so he had to like take it all apart to like put it back together. Mm -hmm. and, oh, Taffy and Sebastian were so intrigued with everything that was going on. They, <laughs> they were just walking all over the picture part of the frame that was, that was just sitting on the, on the floor. Um, there was the ball of twine where like Sebastian would not leave the twine alone. Anytime my husband would pick up the twine, he, Sebastian just like jumped at it and would like with claws completely extended, just trying to dig into the twine and have it for his own. Just as evil um, Taffy evil laid down on the picture so itself. Um, it basically just made it 10 times harder to do anything <laughs> to set the picture back up to where it belonged. <laughs> And then after we were playing with the twine with, with Sebastian a little bit, and he was just going nuts. Uh, my husband tried to take it away from him and we were done and he just like slashed out at my husband. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> he caught his hand pretty bad. Oof. Oh, hello, sir. Yeah, I think, I think yesterday because we were goofing around playing with the cats, he got like clawed on like his foot his pant leg, his hand, <laughs> all just trying to put up a picture on the wall. <laughs> it was very entertaining for me because I was just sitting there and watching it happen. <laughs> so that was not a two person job, so I was just watching the show. I kind of miss having pets, and then I remember stuff like that, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> pets I'm are. By myself right now. I absolutely love my cats. I love Taffy, I love Sebastian, I love them from the bottom of my heart, and they're very fun, and I love having them around. They're also little devils, and the spawns of Satan. <laughs> and they just. They get into some weird situations. But I love having them because they, they make great great for storytelling. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I should put this bait actually on the, in the fishing pole. I'd like to actually use it. Cats like to... So, recently I found out that... So, cats like high spaces. Which pre that's pretty common, that's known. Um, I was going to bed one night and I heard, like, you know, some crinkling or some, like, you know, shuffling of stuff that sounded like it would, they were on the kitchen counter. And I was like, man, I gotta go deal with that before I go to bed. I get up, I walk into the kitchen, and I see Taffy. She is not on the kitchen counter, by any means. She is up on top of the top of our cabinets, like right up against the ceiling. And I was like, Taffy, how did you even get up there? She can't, she's a little smaller, like her legs are a little shorter, so she can't really jump very well. She mostly like crawl, climbs and scrambles up things. Right. And so I look up and I see her on top of the cabinets. And I was like, how did you even get up there? And she like freaks out and scrambles across the cabinets. And I find out she jumps down the fridge. She jumps down off my coffee maker and then onto the ground. And I was just like, why? <laughs> why? What's up there that you need to be up there to see? 
There's like a glass, there's maybe some pancake mix. There's dust, there's a lot of dust up there. If that's what you're interested in, Taffy. It's the ghosts. It could be the ghosts, yeah. Seems everyone with a rifle been hunting these of late. Okay, fish, please. Please. Much appreciated. Made a couple bucks from that. Let's go get ourselves a new Uber. Are you rolling in money? Are you loaded from your fishing, from your fishing escapades? I mean, I only got the one muskie and the bad wolf pelt, so uh, I only made like seven dollars. You could buy a coffee with that. <laughs> <laughs> Around here, coffee's probably like 20 cents, so. <laughs> could you imagine how much caffeine you could get? <laughs> Fry in a hundred coffees. Sir, I would like to purchase every coffee you have for sale. All of it. <laughs> now, I, I, I feel there might be a misunderstanding. What you think I said is I would like a lot of coffee. I would like every coffee bean in this establishment in my cup. <laughs> in the cup. And you put the cup on the table and it's a bucket. <laughs> like a big no, it's a big barrel. Got everything you need. Have a look. All of the coffee beans, please. I can get you anything in there you need. Yep, got to buy a new lake lure. Oh no, I can buy multiple. You could just stock up. Yeah, I think I was able to just buy like five. Oh my god, I can buy a coffee percolator. <laughs> so I can make coffee at camp. <laughs> oh, perfect. Do you drink a lot of coffee? So, not as much. Um, because that, uh, coffee maker that you guys gave me finally died. <laughs> oh, no. And I haven't... I mean, it was an old coffee maker. Yeah, um, I just, I literally just haven't gone out and gotten another one. So, not really, but I mm. definitely would. Yeah, I, I love the Enjoy. coffee maker we've got. It was a little pricey, but it was worth it because it also makes tea. And so... We can make coffee and tea with it. So I would recommend it. I don't know how much you drink tea, but I could I could show you which one we have. And I'm sure they have like other options. With a if I you know, as long as I have a reliable way to easily make it because I'm lazy, um, then I would drink <laughs> it more. Yeah, uh the one we've got has several settings so it can make like lattes it can make iced coffee and it can make hot coffee all in like various sizes so it can just brew a single cup or you can brew uh several you can brew like a carafe of it you know what we're gonna try somewhere else and see what kind of fish we can catch down here a bit closer to town Hello there. then it won't take you like 10 minutes to get back and forth yeah, more like five minutes. Come on now. <laughs> How do you like your coffee? Um, okay, so what I have, um, usually, like, if I'm making coffee at home, it's just, um, I put honey in it. Like, I'll, I'll drink black coffee with honey yeah, in it honey. or some, or some, yeah, honey. Um, either like black coffee with with honey in it, or with like uh, honey and like just a little bit of milk. Um, but if I'm going out and like getting coffee somewhere, um, my favorite thing ever is uh, French vanilla coffee with a splash of dark roast in it. Hello, sir. That is I. I like that. Sorry, I was buying bait, and I just really wanted to listen to the sound of buying 70 pizzas of bait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Um, hey, that sounds good. 
I've never tried coffee with honey. I've only ever put honey in tea. Oh, it's so good. Um, you got to be careful about not putting in too much, but it really, like, it cuts the bitterness of black coffee. Um, and so, like, I have a lot of, like, flavored grounds. Um, like, uh, my mom works at, works at Starbucks, and so she just, get, like, gets free bags of, like, coffee grounds every once in a while. Um, and will send them wonderful. to me. Wonderful. Yeah, so I, I have this, like, orange coffee, and I with the honey in there, it's really good. Nice. We've got... I like a lot of, like... I wish that coffees um, tasted like how they are described, like, on the bag. Like, I have a coffee that is... Uh, oops. I have a coffee that is supposed to taste like caramel and vanilla like has like hints of coffee liquor in it and it just tastes like black coffee <laughs> but it's really good i like it um so i'll usually do that with uh an old co-worker of mine told me to put like oat milk in it and so recently i have been having that coffee with a little bit of oat milk and then some caramel syrup in it and it is very very good Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> I am standing on a bridge, and these two people just came by. Like, the, the villagers just, like, wander around. Hmm? And then, like, they just both stopped in front of me, like, Hey, you're gonna move, right? <laughs> Eventually, they just go around you, but it's like, Sorry, no, I'm fishing, I'm busy. <laughs> I got fish to catch. This river's full of fish. I am, but like going back to coffee, like I am the type that very much enjoys coffee when I cannot taste the coffee that much. I really like sugary, sweet coffees. Um, meanwhile, my husband is like, please just give it to me. Black, nothing in it. No milk, no sweetener. Sometimes he'll take caramel syrup in there, but it's like the complete opposite of how I like coffee. Right. I can, I can, I get that. Like sometimes I, I sometimes I want it to hurt a little bit <laughs> because it helps to wake me up. <laughs> I, I used to just drink coffee black because I didn't know how to make it taste good when I put milk and sugar in it or syrups. So I just kind of dealt with it. Maybe. But now, now I'm a, I, I've found some like recipes that I, I like and can actually make it home and I don't mess it up and it doesn't taste like disgusting. Cause I would, I, I think I used to just put, I don't know if the coffee wasn't strong enough or if when I put the milk in, it just like made it all watery. Oh, but it tasted so bad. I'm like, how do I make it taste like the coffee shops? A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar is the answer. Yep. But if I also drink that too often, I get, like, sick. It, like, gives me a stomach ache because of all the caffeine and the sugar and the acidity from the coffee. It just, like... But it's, it's like someone who has a lactose intolerance and is just like, I'm going to eat this much ice cream, and I know that's my limit. I know how much coffee I can drink before I can't have any more. Before I know I will be sick from it. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> I get a feeling every once in a while um of just like okay if i drink any more monsters this week i know i'm gonna start like hating everything so i've gotta stop i i can't drink monster it's too well first of all most of it's carbonated and i am not a fan of carbonated oh, beverages okay. but it also just kind of tastes like chemically to me I entirely get that. Um, there's a lot of the like energy drinks that I could definitely taste that in. Um, it's like the energy mix that they use. I'm pretty sure. Because mm. um, it's definitely not all natural. <laughs> but oh, uh, does it say it is? Oh no 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 no. I was gonna say that's quite a claim. No, yeah, they don't. Um, but. Uh, for me, the flavors that Monster uses is just, like, 
it covers it up well enough for me and gives me enough energy. Hmm. And it's easy. <laughs> Back in college, uh, my friend and I, who have never had Monster and never liked Monster, never understood why people drink it, were like, I am morbidly curious about this drink. We're gonna try this together. We're gonna buy one, we're gonna try it. And so we bought, I think it was their like, Arnold, Arnold Palmer style one, the one that didn't have carbonation in it, so it was like tea and lemonade something or other. Oh yeah. And we tried it, and we're just sitting here in the dorm room, like trying this monster. And we look at each other with a look of horror of just, oh no, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I was just like, I can't. And we finished it, and we were fine, and all that. Um, we don't, we don't bring it up again. We're like, oh yeah, we we had our fun. We tried it. A week later, my friend comes back to me. He's like, yeah, I had to like stop drinking Monster because I got like addicted to it from drinking that one we we tried together. And he was like, yeah, I was having at least like one or two a day. I was like, dude, what? <laughs> You got addicted to drink, like, he, it was bad, like, he was, like, shaky from it, he was said. Yeah. Yeah, you start drinking two a day, and you'll, you'll get that. I mean, and he was already kind of, like, you know, caffeine wasn't necessarily his thing. So, it's not like his body really, like, had caffeine in it normally. <laughs> he was already, like, high-functioning enough without the caffeine. <laughs> So I, I, I was like, dude, how did you, like, I had, like, half of it. I don't even think I finished, like, my half of it. Because I was like, this is good, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't, I didn't want to get addicted to it, but he did, and it was so weird. I don't know, I guess I just don't understand. I, maybe it just doesn't affect me the way it affects other people. Maybe I'm just built different, okay? <laughs> Maybe that's what being immortal is like, is it's just, you're built different. It doesn't affect you in the same way. Yeah, you know, I don't get addicted to it. Um, I definitely, like, really enjoy my caffeine, but... Okay. <laughs> I can stop whenever I want it. <laughs> that is exactly what I was about to say when you were done speaking. <laughs> <laughs> If I don't drink it, like, I'll, like, not drink it for, like, a month at a time and be fine. And then I'm just like, you know what? I'm feeling really tired. I want some Monster. Yeah, I feel that with coffee is, like, I bounce between doing coffee or tea in the morning, depending on what I'm feeling that day. But I, you know, actually, I guess I do kind of notice when I, I drink coffee for a few days and then I don't drink coffee again because I'm just like, I feel like tea. That I do feel like a little like, man, I wish I had a cup of coffee this morning instead. Which is probably the caffeine talking. You're a fine steelhead, my friend. I'm afraid you're staying with me. Looks like uh, this this lake has a lot of s a smaller fish, but then I can catch more of them. Yeah, you won't have to travel back to town back and forth to hus um, haul a musky back. Yep. This one's got largemouth bass and steelhead trout. A little fun. Nice little guys. What kind of stuff have you been catching? I actually don't remember. Oh. Um, I, I have, like, I have zoned out of Stardew because I'm talking to you. I currently am catching sunfish, apparently. Okay. <laughs> I know when it was raining, I was catching eels, um... There were like halibut and sardines. It depends on where you're fishing in this game. Right. Uh, like there's, there's river fish. There's uh, lake, ocean. There's some special seasonal fish that uh, you can catch that are like bonkers and really really hard to catch because the fish is basically just like sprinting up and down the like you're gauge mine. you're supposed to <laughs> that the fish spawns in and is like, please. Please stop. Please stop. It is so erratic. It's, like, stressful. <laughs> I've only caught it once. I caught one of them one time, and I was like, I am satisfied. 
I don't need to do this again. What kind of fish they did you say it was? I don't, I don't remember. There's four, so with the four seasons in Stardew, there's some, some fish rotate out per season. And then there's four seasonal fish that you can catch a singular time per season. And they are freaking super, super hard to catch. It's ridiculous. Like they're crazy. They're just darting up and down the bar and then they change randomly. They won't sit still. So a lot of the fish are very just calm. Sometimes they'll even just like sit still in one position for a long time. But the, the seasonal fish are like, no, you have to put in effort. A lot of effort to try to catch me. Are there any fish like that in Red Dead? That are just like super, super hard to catch for like no reason other than like, hey, I caught this and it's very impressive. Not really. I mean, the size of the fish just de de determines from what I've, from what I understand, de determines how hard it is to catch. Like those muskies are like four times the size of these other fish, and that's why they're harder. Mm. Um, but I also haven't really gone into, really gone into the um, fishing very much um, here. I mean, fishing isn't really the main, the main goal of Red Dead anyway. Yeah, um, but like. It's not the main goal, but there's so many side things in this game that you really, like, you're missing out if you don't do them. Uh, and I didn't, really, the first time I played through. I kind of just ran through the story, and I was like, oh, that's it? This is like a, for the $60 game that I bought immediately. You know, it was a good story, but, you know, I thought this game was much more fleshed out, and it was. I just didn't do it, because I was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you just beelined the main plot. Yeah. Is it, a, is it an open world game? Is it, it is. Oh, that's why. I see. Yeah, I've been, speaking of open world games, I have been just, I, I, a lot of my free time has just gone to, oh gosh, has just gone to Elden Ring. I am, I have been like, not necessarily 100%ing Elden Ring, but I am trying to fight every single boss that there is in that game. <laughs> All of them. Oh my and, god. Yeah, I have like... A few hundred hours and I'm still not done. Like there's still a whole chunk of the map that's like hidden from me. Granted, I did play like several hours on one character and then restarted because I didn't look, I'm a mage in real life. I didn't really feel like playing a mage class in the game. So now I'm a filthy dex build. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> I've always played dex builds in Souls games. <laughs> They're just fun. I like moving fast and hitting things fast. If I... Of... Oops, sorry, oh, sorry, what's up? No, no, go ahead. If I ever do pick back up Elden Ring and actually try for it, I have no idea what I want to do. Uh, I would, I would think that because um, when we played Monster Hunter that you were playing the Hammer class that you would probably really enjoy just a, str a straight strength build. Big weapons and big damage, but it's a bit slower. Yeah, um, yeah, I could definitely see myself doing that. I just, I, mm, I, I don't know because, okay, so is there a way to make a support build for, for, for Elden Ring or? I think that would be a faith build. I don't, I haven't played it, but I know that they have like healing spells and yep. stuff, so that might be yep. it. Come on. Otherwise, like, I think, I don't know if there's like, aside from the few co-op heals, I don't know if there's like buffs and stuff. You mostly just buff yourself. Okay. Which might be what you want. Um. The main builds that I see that people do are like straight strength builds, uh, like I'm doing like a dex and bleed build. Um, I have a pizza cutter for a weapon, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> uh, there's magic, so there is um, just sorceries, so like spells and damage and all that, and then there's um, faith builds 
which are more, I think, healing or paladin type stuff. It used to be in older Souls games that they had uh, pyromancy as well, which was a lot of fire stuff. But in Elden Ring, for some reason, they mixed that with faith. So now it is just pyromancy and faith are the same thing. And it made them very nutty. Like, I'll, I really want to try doing a faith build at some point because they look very fun. Very crazy. My friend is playing a faith build and they had, um... I don't know where they got it. They had this weapon that was a horn that just blew bubbles at the enemies. What? <laughs> I don't know. It was perfect for them. And I don't know where they got that weapon, but it's it's fantastic. Okay, I might have to do a faith build if I pick it up again. <laughs> um, I don't know how easy it is at the start, though. A lot of, like, like, the sorcery build was very difficult at the start because you got one spell, and it took a while to find, like, other spells that were even just better than the, than the base spell they gave you. So I don't know how good or bad it would be with, um... With faith. Right. Oh my god, the other... My, I'm just remembering more about my friend who did their who's who did their faith build, and he like, oh my god, he was like, it's like, hey, till we watch this, and then they just like rolled on the ground with like lightning st like sparking all around them, and just rolled into enemies and did damage, and I was like, what the heck? Like it, it fit them. They're very chaotic, and I was just like, dude, where did you find that spell? It was a spell that they had. And they just rolled on the ground and killed enemies with it. <laughs> it was so funny. They had built the most, like, silly meme builds that I, I, I had seen. That wasn't just, like, mean meme where there's a lot of people who will do in co-op. They'll have uh, bleed and scarlet rot. And it's a very sad, sad existence when one of those people invades your world. Because you just, like, melt. It deals, like, tick damage to your health. Both of them do, and then bleed will, like, take huge chunks of your health. I am not a fan of people invading my world in Elden Ring. If you can't tell. That's entirely fair. <laughs> yeah. I love co-oping. I love playing with my friends in Elden Ring. It's so much fun. I cannot stand being invaded. I think there's because a people people are better at me at the game. <laughs> I think there's a mod that allows you to do co-op without turning on invasions. In Elden Ring? Yeah. Oh, I hope so. I saw a TikTok about it of like, do you want to play co-op and don't want these filthy people invading your game? There's a mod for this. Um, somewhere, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I bet that there is. I really hope someone, eventually, I, I'm sure it would be incredibly difficult, but I hope that eventually there is a mod for Elden Ring, that like a randomizer mod. I really want to- I love Dark Souls randomizers. Eventually, I really want to stream a, a randomizer, a, a Dark Souls 1 randomizer on, on stream, because that would... Uh, it's it's so fun. Have you played Have you played Dark Souls 1? I have not. Okay. I, I haven't played any Souls games until Eld Elden Ring. Oh, gotcha. Uh, it's very entertaining when you go to... You go to fight the, the first... One of the first bosses you can fight in Dark Souls 1 is a set of gargoyles. Um, and it's re it's really fun when when those gargoyles get replaced with, like, two late-game bosses, and you have to fight both of them at the same time. It's terrifying. And, and very, very hard. I love it. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Hello there. I was I was doing really really well in one of my randomizers and all of a sudden I got to one of the um, kind of required bosses you need to get to 
some of the end game stuff. And it's this like tiny room. Um, this boss is in. And I go in there. And oh god. I go in there and I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be one of the easiest bosses in the game. What is it gonna get replaced with? And then it got replaced with like the one boss I actually had to use summons for, for to help. beat in the game proper when I was playing it without mods. And it's like this huge boss that you have like a bigger uh you have a big arena to fight him in in the game originally. But in here it's just this tiny room and there he is and he's taking up half the arena just by standing there and oh his attack is thrashing around and he does all of your health. <laughs> Uh, it's Manus. I don't know if you've seen Manus, but oh my god. His moveset is very difficult to dodge. His moveset is... takes up a very wide area of, like, a huge hitbox area. And then it's most of the time when you- when he gets hit- when you hit him? Or no, sorry, when he gets- when he hits you, he's gonna hit you, like, five times before you can get away from him. And it's painful. That sounds disgusting. Oh, it was. I actually, I min-maxed my, I actually went out of my way to min-max myself as much as I could. Um, cause up until that point I would just, I had just kind of been like goofing around cause I know the game pretty well and I, I'm like, I know what kind of build I can do with these items I've been randomly given to me. This, I had to like, uh, when you randomize Dark Souls 1, it can give you, like, a cheat sheet, just in case you, like, can't find a key item or something, and you really need it to progress. So I was, like, I was looking at this cheat sheet, and I was like, where is the ring that makes your- that makes your rolls have more iframes? Where is this certain weapon that, like, causes- that's best for my dex build? What do I do? And I still- I still didn't win. I eventually gave up because I was, like, I was just playing it for fun, and I was like, this isn't fun anymore. But I went out of my way to try so hard to beat him. And I almost did, too. I got- there were a couple of times where I almost got him down to a couple of hits, and then he would have died, but I just... Couldn't do it, man. He got me. He's just so frustrating to me. Fishing up all these artifacts. I fished up a skeletal tail. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I fished up a tail. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> I've also fished up an ornamental fan, a, fo um, a fossil, some geodes. The usual. Frozen tears. <laughs> you're you're fishing up all these relics, and I'm just like, yo, a bass. That's like four dollars right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's money. Oh, my cat's sleeping on the bed. Hi, Taffy. Oh, Taffy baby. Yeah, these these like steelhead trouts down here that are a lot easier to catch are only like 50 cents less than the muskie <laughs> each oh, and i can carry please. five of them also you could just make like bank yeah i just, just made like that. 25 dollars <laughs> me that uh that stonks meme yes okay. it's raining today in my game i think i'll Probably gonna fish up a bunch of eels now, which actually are very expensive. Not expensive, uh, they sell for a lot of money. You know what doing all this fishing has made me realize? What? I haven't eaten today. Okay. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm actually kind of hungry too. I, I ate a little bit this morning. I had like a scone and like some of a bagel, but I haven't had like a proper meal.
What are you gonna have for lunch? I have no idea. I um, I don't really have a whole lot right now. I need to go shopping. <laughs> it's part of why I went to the store this morning. I was like, oh, we're out of some stuff we usually have a lot of. I made some roasted chickpeas the other day that I think I'm gonna get some tortillas and make tacos with. Hell yeah. Oh, I got Yeah, new record anchovy, fourteen inches, baby. Hell yeah! Wait, that... already, like, what's up? That's a large anchovy. <laughs> yep. That's why it's my new record. I didn't think anchovies got longer than like five inches. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know too much about fish. It's so weird how some of them can get just like massive if you leave them alone oh yeah is it like i know it's not a fish but like turtles i think are like that or can be uh Unless... lobsters are lobster that's yeah that's what i was thinking of lobsters just can just if left alone they can just get crazy yeah i think like the only reason that they eventually die is that they're unable to like find a new shell big enough for them or something like that um at a certain oh, point okay. And so I saw, I saw a post somewhere about this guy who wants to he wants to raise a lobster to be a to be a god, um, <laughs> by by raising it in such a way that it's like it's kept safe so that it is able to just continue growing, and they will provide it with with a new shell when it needs it. Oh my god! And it will be their new god. <laughs> that is a choice. <laughs> And the first thing I thought... You're, you're asking for it at that point. The first thing I thought is those, like, creatures in D&D. <laughs> if, they, if they think you are, then you are a god. <laughs> or something. Um, what is those oh, weird... Amazing. The Kuatoa. That they're able to, like... Like, if they... If they, like, like something enough or something like that, it just gains power and, becomes a, and can become a god. What? I didn't, I didn't know about that. I don't know too much about D and D monsters. Oh my god! I think I just uh, remembered the uh, orcs from Warhammer. Where yeah. They, if you if they think something is true, it is true. Yeah. If they believe it enough, then it just it is it is truth. Um. But like, I think our our DM threw it threw the Kuatoa at us when we were in one village. I want to say, or he tried to, and then we just didn't interact with it. Oh no. I think because I think we were heading up to Fire Shear at the time, um, and we were just like, "Nah, we got something else on our plate." <laughs> we're busy. I kind of like not knowing about a lot of D and D monsters, and then being in groups with people who know a lot about D and D monsters, like you. <laughs> because then when something very terrifying actually happens and there's like a scary monster or like something very dangerous y'all are all freaking out and i'm over here like oh that's kind of cute that looks like a cool that looks like a friend and then it and then it's uh like what was it the abolith we were fighting the other day i didn't know what that was oh my god yeah aboliths are scary <laughs> i don't know I, that was it was i <laughs> Because we share an office right now, um, I can see my husband's screen, and so 
I could see the like amount of HP that thing had, and then when Croc came in and one like in bit it that first turn, you did like exactly half its health, and I'm just sitting there snickering. <laughs> this is amusing. I mean. Yeah, I think they're they're a scary monster, but also we're a party of level sixteen adventurers, so. It's not scary for us then. What makes yeah. it Abolith scary? Um, what it used on Croc, um, in that it can take control of somebody. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, I don't remember its full stat block, but it does some like dumb stuff like that. That makes it very very annoying. Okay. Yeah, I when Croc got possessed, I was so 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 sure Leo was is gonna be his target because that's always the case. No, uh, he uh, DM DM'd me and it was just like it, it like it was commanding me to kill the knight. Yeah, because he was just like he was telling me after he was just like, oh, this guy's expendable. We'll just make sure like this NPC goes down, and then we were like, no. No, 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 no. We're saving him. Yeah, because Croc missed. <laughs> I know, that was so funny. Well, you wouldn't have missed if the disadvantage wasn't um, applied, and so you were only rolling it normal. Right. Yeah, because Elsa would have had advantage. <laughs> Does wet work in water? <laughs> <laughs> he pondered the question and then didn't actually like answer about it, so it just worked. And I was okay with that. I mean, I don't really necessarily see why it wouldn't. I don't know. What? I was just gonna say water's wet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Water's wet. Maybe that has something to do with it. I know it's like if there isn't a surface it can stick to on one of the sides, it will fizzle. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's a ton of restrictions. Uh, if it lights on fire, it will burn and then it will fizzle. That's it. Come on. I've never asked you this. What is your like favorite spell or like if you have like a favorite spell or a favorite monster or something like that in D and D? Like, what is it? Um. I don't know about <laughs> spell because I don't really play spellcasters that often. Mm. No, you just play chaos. Um. Hmm. My favorite creature type is undead, but. Is that because you're a vampire? Partly. Um, <laughs> You're like my people. They're also just, it's, you can do a lot with undead. Um, Cause like, uh, it's very easy to like take, take any creature uh, that exists in, in 5e and make it harder simply by making it undead and giving it undead fortitude. Um, oh, okay. And oh yeah, because that's the that's the thing that um, what is it when they die you roll uh, dice to see if they actually die or if they are back with one. Yeah, it essentially gives them a death saving throw um, for every time they take damage that would kill them, and if they pass, yeah. they're just still up. Um, but uh, the other thing is that. Uh, so something that 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 kind of bothers me, and I try to. Uh, I try to have in my games is realistic reactions of the opponents because when you're a party of like seemingly powerful adventurers and you just killed two thirds of the bandit group they're gonna run away <laughs> right um, or like yeah, a wolf yeah. pack you know if their initial attack fails they're probably gonna leave mm -hmm. instead of you know letting the entire pack die I don't have to worry about that. Like, it doesn't bother me because I don't have to worry about that with undead because they don't care, usually. Mm -hmm. Like, m like, uh, and when I say undead, I mean, like, undead, not living dead. You know, I still play vampires and other living dead as intelligent creatures um, and stuff uh -huh. like that. But usually, you know, when you've got skeletons or zombies or um, 
like uh, flush golems and stuff like that, they were just ordered to do something and they're going to do it until they succeed or they're unable to do it. Um, and so it allows me to have realistic challenging encounters where the enemies will fight to the bitter end. And it mm -hmm. makes sense in my mind. Yeah, I I like doing that too. I've, I've only DM'd maybe like two or three times. Um, but I do distinctly remember one time with one of the encounters I had, uh, they had gotten through most of them. And then I just had the ones that were fighting that were still alive try to run away or try to go get back up. And it did work for them because the the player characters did end up just defeating all of them. But uh, I wanted to try to incorporate stuff like that because I think it's more fun that way. Right. And also if they do get away and they bring back reinforcements, another fight for the another fight for the cat for the for the party. Yep. And that seems fun. <laughs> and it brings in a moral element too of, you know, they're not trying to fight anymore, so you're stabbing people in the back. Mm -hmm. And makes people, you know, it makes the party, if the, the enemy's still fighting, there's never really a moral quandary about it. You know, they're choosing uh -huh. to still fight, so it's it's okay. But if they're running away, and you're attacking them while they're fleeing, mm, it makes people think before they do it. Yeah. Been catching some flounder like i love how the flounder looks on this because its eyes are just like it's it's pixel art so there's just a couple pixels for its eyes and it's just like it's looking down with just wide eyes to me <laughs> like it's like you want you want to mess with me you want to go like this flounder is ready to throw down <laughs> hell yeah um but to answer your question i'd probably say that my favorite monster in the my favorite creature in DD &D are any form of necromancer those are fun um especially liches um i have a named lich that is in both of my campaigns right now and it's the same person um because they're just in the same world setting 700 years apart yeah oh fun oh yeah yeah i remember hearing about that yeah, um, so both both parties uh, will have the opportunity to meet the uh, Elder Lich Cassandra. Um, mm -hmm. And as for spell... Hmm, I'm going to be really basic and just Eldritch Blast is a very useful spell. Um, yeah. Because it's something that I didn't actually realize, actually, until this morning. Oh, God. Yeah? Um, I was watching a video um, about uh, on Warlocks and stuff, and so Grasp of Hadar and Forceful Strike or whatever, the two invocations that let you either pull an enemy closer or push them away with your Eldritch Blast. Uh-huh. I've been using them wrong this whole time. Oh. Because... Yeah, so in the in the description for it, it's when you hit somebody with Eldritch Blast, you can either push them 10 feet away or pull them 10 feet closer. But Eldritch Blast doesn't work like other damaging cantrips. Other damaging cantrips, as you um, level up, it um, incre just increases the damage dies. But Eldritch Blast increases how many times you hit with it. They're separate okay. beams. Oh, wait. Every time, if you target the same opponent with, like, let's say you were a 16th level warlock, and you hit somebody mm -hmm. with all four beams, you can pull them 40 feet f towards you, or push them oh, 40 God. feet away. I didn't realize that, because it's for every hit. Yeah, so then technically you could also, like, could you, could you, like, on, for example, with the four beams, could you, uh, push them, like, 10 feet, push, pull them 10 feet, just back and forth? Mm, that it, you, have you to, like, might be able to, actually, yeah. Which could be absolutely disgusting when combined with something like Wall of Fire. Either that or my, my thought was, like, a lot of the terrain spells that, like, put, like, spikes or something on the ground. 
where you oh, like yeah. will take damage if you first enter it. So like that's where you could get really disgusting. You put down difficult terrain um somewhere and then you have an ally a, an ally spellcaster put down a da- like a a concentration damaging area of effect spell in that terrain and then you use eldritch blast to keep them there oh that's so cheesy <laughs> i like it it would be so that's disgusting so mean <laughs> And alternatively, like, it doesn't say that, you know, you, you could pull them off, you could push or pull them off of a cliff. Or oh you could God. you could slam them into, like, a wall or something to do more damage. Like, there's no restriction on it like other moving spells do where it's, it specifically says you can't make them move, like, somewhere that would be dangerous. Like, you can't make them move off a cliff, like, with infestation. Um... Nice. Gross, yeah. I but didn't even Eldritch Blast, that. you can. <laughs> oh my god. It's absolutely disgusting. That is disgusting. I love it. And then you combined it with just agonizing blast so that you just do your charisma modifier in damage addition to it. And it's just, it's gross. Mm-hmm. It is the most damaging cantrip. Um... Is it just uh, warlocks that get Eldritch Blast, or can another class get that? Um, only warlocks get it. However, you can literally take um, Magic Adept Warlock, which gives you two oh. cantrips and a first level spell from their spell list, so you can get Eldritch Blast that way. Um, however, it becomes technically not worth it, because um, it will still level up properly, since you're not getting it from the Warlock class. I uh, believe it would be tied to your own level, in which case, you know, you can still get the, the beam increase, I believe. Um, but you would then have to start taking every feat um, for the Eldritch Adept to get the invocations to make it worth it. Um, mm-hmm. So theoretically, like, if this is, if you're, like, min-maxing a build on using Eldritch Blast combined with a spell from another class, that you want that to be your main class... You could do it, but it would be, like, your shtick, okay. I think. Because you, you wouldn't be able to really get any other ASIs, may, or maybe one or one other feat, but you'd have to get, like, a couple invocations, I think, to really make it worth it. Okay. There's so many worms on the ground. What about you? What's your favorite spell and creature? Oh, creature is a good question. I don't, because I, like, much like I've said, I don't actually know a lot about the creatures in D&D. Um, I, I guess for creature. Or playable race. I think I'll say for creature. Bullets are always stuck in the back of my head because of one terrifying experience we had with a bullet that I just, I I know them. I actually remember them and know them by name. So that says anything about why I like them. That we were in like a maze and they kept just coming up from the ground following us and it was terrifying. And it has cemented bullets in my head. Uh, the shark, not the, not an action. The land <laughs> shark, yeah. Yes, the land shark. Um, <laughs> let's see, spell. Hmm, I really like lightning bolt. Um, maybe it's my bias as a lightning sorcerer, but it just does a lot of damage and can hit from very far away, and I really like that. I also kind of like Disguise Self, because it can be kind of fun. A lot of the, like, social spells I'm a big fan of. Um, playable Race. Uh, hmm. I've always... Okay, I haven't actually played them as a playable race, but I want to play a vampire, because I think it would be fun. Um, 
I also really like elves. Elves are fun. Hell yeah. Um, I really do like the... Um, I forgot. I think they called it a Dampier for the... Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to play, a Dampier. Yeah, for uh, the... Um, what is it? The, the three... Lineages, that's it. Um, the, the lineages, because there's the Dampier, um, the Hexblood, and the, un the, the Undead one. Um, the other one. Yeah, yeah. I... What's your... What about you? Um, your race of choice. Yeah, uh... So, like, of the of the base ones, I've got two that I'm torn between. Uh, Warforged, uh, obviously. Um, I, I love my robot boys. Um, but the Hexblood is very interesting. Um, and uh, in that, like... Uh, like, the roleplay elements that come from the Hexblood's features... As well as them just being, like, generally, like, they're useful enough um, that, you know, I, I feel like I can I can properly use them, like, strategically in a game, but they're also just, just interesting. Yeah. Um, and have, you know, roleplay and social elements as well, and that's a, it's something that I think is a big problem, or at least I haven't gone through all of, like, the new revised races, um, but for a lot of the older ones, uh, like, the legacy ones, there was a problem of, like, this feature is cool in theory, but it's also nerfed into the ground to where I don't even want to use it. Oh, yeah, you were talking... I think, what was it, with the lizard folk or something you were using for croc? You were talking about one of his abilities that you never, you never use because of those reasons. Yeah, the lizard folk gets hung, hungry jaws. Um, in the legacy version, you can only use it once per day, and it gives you 1d6 plus your con modifier temporary hit points. Uh -huh. it, so it... Once your con is maxed out, it doesn't scale anymore, you, and you can only, you can only use it once per day, and it gives you a pittance for for temp HP to the point where it uh, it's like I don't really have a reason to use it instead of one of my rogue abilities because everything yeah. else I have is arguably better, and I can only really use it once anyway. That's going to give me barely any hit points. Um, and but now. In the updated version, you can it scales with your proficiency bonus and how many times you can use it per day. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where it's like, all right, yeah, I can actually start, you know, doing like a bit of like a tank strategy with it. Where yeah, like, you could like yeah. consider it. Yeah, I feel okay. So the monk also got like a ability recently. I think it was with Tasha's baby that has something similar. So it has quickened healing is the name of it, and they. With that, you can use your bonus action and like use a key point to basically heal yourself. But I've found that like I'm at like I think level eleven, and it just it heals for beans damage that I would rather just try to dodge and not get hit by something. It does like one d eight plus wisdom. Wisdom or yeah, it's gotta be wisdom. Um. But it doesn't do a lot of- no, it does what? It does your monk die. I'm playing your revised monk, so it has like a d8 for me right now. Right. But it doesn't- it, it barely heals anything, and I don't really want to spend my bonus action healing when I could just avoid taking more damage, or I could do more damage to the enemy and try to kill it before it gets to me again. Right. My poor monk, though, is just... All right, have a think about it. I wish he had a little more AC, because he, he runs in, and he takes a lot of damage, and then he goes down, and I get maybe a couple of hits sometimes. It was worse before the DM let me use a, a revised monk. I had, like, 20 or 30 less HP. So now I can get hit three times instead of two and be able to hit things. Oh my god. <laughs> is this Valko? Uh, yes. Yes, my, my, precious, my precious message. <laughs> he is, he has the health of a wet paper towel. Oh my god. 
He could take a couple hits, but it's not that great. But I love him. He's he's very sweet. <laughs> he's got a great personality. This one's been giving beatdowns for Dutch. Hello there. This is a no good bastard. Make him pay. I hope the uh, it's possible that we'll come and show up in other campaigns as well that we are a part of. And I would be excited for for that if it were to happen. I'm trying to have a relaxing day fishing and people just gotta start shooting at me. <laughs> and running me over with a carriage. What oh, the heck? No. What? <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. My horse okay, is freaked out though. Yeah, you ran over my horse. Oh no! Can your horse die? Oh yeah, absolutely. Jez is fine oh, though. Oh no! Oh good, oh She's good. She's okay. Oh, good. Yeah, your horse can die. You just have to buy a new horse? Yeah, uh, horse and horses uh, are quite expensive. And there's a bonding mechanic um, that will, you know, increase your your horse's, like, stats for, like, speed and maneuvering and all yeah. that shit. So, uh, I'm already at, like, a pretty high bond with Jezza. I don't want to have to start that over. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, that's important. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm actually at full bond, and she's a racehorse, so she's quite fast. It's nice. Mm -hmm. You know what, just for you, yeah, let's see what other horses are available. Because you can have multiple horses. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have multiple cats in this game. I hm. would have, like, 20. Welcome to my shop. Have a look around. Uh, there's a racehorse and two standard horses. I can't afford any of them. And their stats are not better than Jez's. Okay, so. Jezza stays for today. Eh, I mean, even if even if I did get a new horse, you know, I'd keep Jezza. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, because uh, there's like three kinds of horses. Um, there's the racehorse, the standard horse, and then there's like a big horse. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's a real uh, massive one. Yeah, it's, so it's like a Clydesdale. Kind of like a Clydesdale, I think. It's not um, I th like a Clydesdale would be in its category, um, but like, it's it's a lot better for when you're in like scrapes and all that because you could essentially body check other riders and you'll be fine. You should be fine. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't really do that with Jezza. She's a bit too fine boned. <laughs> she might get hurt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got them thin bones. That's like glass bones and paper skin. And that's why I'm like, whenever I see the wild horses, I, I take a look at a couple of them to see if they're the kind that I'm that I'm looking for. Oh, you can catch the wild ones too. Yeah, you can you can catch and tame the wild horses. It takes a lot longer okay. than if you you know buy a horse to bond with them. But you can do it, and then, you know, it's a lot cheaper. Pardon me, I'm just gonna go out and go catch a horse, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, screw it, if I if I find another uh, herd, I'll, I'll see if I can catch one. Hmm. Problem is, it's kind of, like, I don't know the locations for them. It's kind of random when I find yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, I could steal somebody else's, but... Eh. Why would you do that? That's so mean. <laughs> they raised that horse. They have a bond with that horse. Yeah, now I'm gonna have a bond with that horse. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually killed the last... the guy that owned Jezza. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> no! <laughs> Just like, the, the Jezza's mine now, sorry. Oh. Um. No idea what that marker's for. Yeah. 
it is about that time and I am fairly hungry, actually. I need to go get some lunch. Mm. Yeah. I gotta finish off this day here, otherwise it'll start me at the ba at the beginning of the day. I've located um, the... I've discovered the location of a legendary fish. Whoa. Hold on, what? Hey. Yeah. Fish. I discovered a legendary fishing spot. Okay. Hey. Let's see if That's I can cool. catch the big guy. Probably once this day is over for me, I'll be heading on out. Alrighty. But I gotta, I gotta know about that legendary spot now. Is that somewhere you can go like right away? Oh yeah, I'm actually like I'm here. Like I, oh. I was, I was riding by it, and it gave me the notification. You've discovered, you know, a legendary fishing spot. Um, but I will leave that for, for next week. Yes, let me catch this fish and I'll go head off to bed and sleep and save. That's so cool though. So hey, I guess there's a, there's one of those things from Red Dead that you didn't know was a thing. Yeah. So I think I remember just like finding some of the spots before, but like I said, I never really like went into the fishing. So I, I never I never really tried to catch them or anything like that. You're gonna catch you're gonna catch a big whopper. Hell yeah. Uh while you're doing that, are you able to raid people yet, or...? I don't know, actually. This is my first stream, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just hoping it, like, you know, ran okay. I don't know anything about raiding people, really. Okay. Um... Do you have anyone you could raid? Let's see. Oh, yeah, Cynical is streaming, is doing an art stream right now. Oh, nice, yeah. Let's go raid Sin. Yeah, um, so on your quick actions bar on Twitch, um, uh, <clears throat> see if you can... Where's that? Oh, uh, go to your stream Oh, manager. no, I see it, I see it, I see it. Yeah, uh, look to see in there if you can find a raid channel button. If you can't... Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I got it. Fantastic. Oh, I should, I should, I should save my game before I do this stuff, before I collapse from exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, for the night. Yes. Thank you all so very much for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed our our chill morning stream. Oh my god, Shaper just got back. <laughs> oh no! Hi, Shaper. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. I'm sorry. We're, we're just about to go raid Cynical. <laughs> so yeah, so you could go watch Cynical. They're doing art. Yeah. What are they drawing? I wonder. Um... I'm not sure. Well, I'm sure whatever it is, it's a good time. Yeah. You should go check them out. I'm gonna send you guys over to Sin. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow, tomorrow evening, for our Jade Wings Company stream. Uh, Tenwi, uh, is Saturday gonna be your main stream for the moment, or are you adding any others? Uh, good question. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out my schedule. Um, I should be back next Saturday. Um, we'll see about maybe doing some stuff during the week. You can follow my Twitter. I'll probably say something about it on there once I figure it out. So yeah, uh, twitter.com slash Vogel. I think that's what I, it's the same as my Twitch. It's also in my about. <laughs> thank you so much for streaming with me. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out. Yes. Alright. Have a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.